Uh, I'm Meredith Stead. I am a trust and estates attorney at a big firm in Midtown Manhattan. Uh, my relationship with Steve Wagner is that he was my attorney for a tenant buyout in which I, in fact, was one of the two tenants. Hi, my name is John Knapp, and I'm a nurse practitioner. I work in hospice and palliative care. Since I'm connected to this one over here, I met Steve the same way, <laughs> which is when we were arranging to get bought out of our rent-stabilized lease in Tribeca. When we were first uh, thinking about, we were entertaining the idea of a buyout, we said to each other, we need to talk to someone who does these all the time and who knows the things that we don't know. And I did some research and I asked around and um, I found Steve first on a website called Brick Underground, which is a, a website about all sorts of tenant and lawyer issues. And he writes a number of articles for them. And so my my first introduction to him was as a writer, and he is quite a succinct and fascinating writer. And after I saw these articles, I reached out to my sort of cohort of colleagues in the law business. And I said, does anyone know this guy? <laughs> and I got a number of responses, and they were all uniformly positive and enthusiastic. Real estate in Manhattan, very uh, complicated business. And uh, Tribeca, it's a uh, very hot market our landlord or rather the owner of our building we had some communication issues we were trying to get bought out but at the same time there was a series of floods that were unrelated to the owner but nonetheless it's his space steve was very good at managing the damages claims and having that process not derail the the overall goal of, of getting bought out he was very good at changing strategy yeah he signed on for one thing and he ended up helping us with a lot more so he signed on for two pieces i would say negotiating a price for the buyout where we relied on him because of his knowledge of the market and the fact that he'd done so many of these and then actually preparing an agreement and sort of closing on the agreement and john's absolutely right this derailed almost derailed in a couple of ways it almost derailed first because we had this, in a sense, conflicting issue that arose. When, when we say floods, what I mean is water poured in through the ceiling into the unit. And since we were still tenants, the owner kind of needed to address it. It was sort of a, an obstacle to getting the agreement finalized because it sort of held up discussions about what we thought the main point of the exercise was. But on the, same, on the other hand, you know, we didn't want to just say, well, we're, we're just going to not talk about the fact that there's an inch of water on the floor. So Steve was terrific about changing horses in midstream, as it were, or sort of adding horses in midstream. Like he signed off for one thing, he ended up doing a number of things. He also ended up being the person who was very much about the enforcement of the agreement, holding the owner's feet to the fire. You signed this, you said you would do this, you haven't done this, here's what happens if you don't do those things. So he was everything. He was the negotiator, he was the drafter, he was the enforcer. He put on many, many hats in the course of his representation of us. Right. And we really didn't want to sue or to get aggressive because we're just trying to close the deal. And Steve was uh, walked a very fine line between, okay, I'm ready to push now or I'll be more diplomatic. I have no doubt that, that if we had decided that we would, we were going to, let's say, sue for harassment or something, that he would have backed us up and said, okay, well, this is what you need to show. He's a, he's a delightful human being. When you're in first in law school, one of the things they talk to you about is the, is the different relationships you have with your client. And one of them is advocacy and one of them is counseling, right? And so Steve is extremely good at, I would say, all aspects of client interaction. As, as John said, he would come to us and say, all right, well, here's a decision for you to make. I'm going to give you input that I hope will help you but ultimately you're gonna make the decision. Or he would say, all right, well, you've made your decision. I'm not gonna go out and, and fight for you based on what you've told me you want to do. So he was just he was just always ready to turn on a dime. He was always ready to say, here are your options. Here's what you should consider. In my opinion, it would be unwise to do this, but you may have other reasons for doing it and I will accept those. He was brilliant in that sense. I don't know what we would have done if we had not found Steve. John moved into this space, the space that we relinquished a rent stabilized lease for in 1977. It's a loft building, which means it was originally a warehouse, essentially. Everything that ended up making the loft a livable residential place was essentially built in by John. Any wall that was not a bearing wall, John built. Any flooring that was not the original flooring, John put in. There's a tub. The reason there's a tub is because of John. 
So our attachment to the space was very longstanding and also very deep. It's not sort of a typical tenant apartment relationship. Steve understood that this was emotionally difficult for us because we were relinquishing something that had more meaning than an apartment might typically have to a tenant. We were relinquishing relationships of 40 plus years. We were relinquishing a space that in a sense we felt an ownership of because we had done so many things to make it what it was. He acknowledged this and took it into account without letting us wallow in it. When you wrote that article, that's, that, that's a great service to people in the Brick Underground, his blog. Um, that's a great service to people who are considering buyouts. There was a particular article, and that article was specifically about the current market in terms of tenant buyout, what could be expected, what factors would influence expectations about a buyout. So it was extremely helpful to me because it was like, it, it was essentially very fact-driven. It was, mm. here is the current status of the market based on the fact that I have done, I don't know, 10 of these buyouts in the past six months. Here's what I'm seeing. Here are the trends. Here are the issues that will inform a decision by a landlord or a tenant of what to do in terms of a buyout. If you have a question about some aspect of the case that he's working with you on, and he's on vacation in some tropical place, he will answer his phone. <laughs> I would trust Steve implicitly with respect to any question about landlord-tenant relations, in part because he has actually represented both sides, which is highly unusual for most attorneys in the field, mm. and which gives him enormous credence with all parties in a negotiation. One of the representatives of the owner at one point realized who Steve was, and he was really looking forward to working with him. He, he was recognized positively by the uh, landlord side of the, of the profession, which was, you know, that's, you know, that's helpful. Yeah. I think that that was extremely helpful.